The Holy Gospel for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost is from the 15th chapter of St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered her, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, work in us that faith, the faith that brings healing and hope. Amen. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. This is not my favorite saying of Jesus, and I'm sure uh, you're the same. It crossed my mind that uh, you won't find this story in many children's Bibles, I bet, huh? I checked the one we give to families when their child is baptized, and of course it's not there. It's probably not in any children's Bible. It's a story that uh, makes us uncomfortable, doesn't it? As we look at it, these jarring words that Jesus says. Yet as I've, as I've dealt with the story this week, I, f- I find that I don't, I, I, maybe I'm not supposed to like it, but I, but I kind of do in a certain way. For it challenges us and makes us wonder. We're not comfortable with Jesus the way he answers this desperate mother. But that's been that way in the church for some time. People have through the centuries tried to find ways to understand it that Jesus has not been that harsh. Some hundred years ago, a scholar suggested that Jesus didn't say throw it to the dogs. He used a word more like puppies, that he was kind of jesting with her. That would be great, except he doesn't use a word that's like puppies, and so that really isn't an accurate read at all. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. That's what Jesus says to this desperate mom, and it is an uncomfortable story. There have been a number of ways people have sought to understand this. One is to suggest that Jesus was engaging with the woman in a sort of test, and in her reply, she passed the test. But the fact is, even if it's that, Jesus doesn't look especially good giving a test to this desperate mother, does he? I like the suggestion that Jesus is testing the disciples. They only bring up this woman not out of compassion for her, but to try to get her to quit bothering them, right? And Jesus replies, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that makes perfect sense to the disciples. And then we will see Jesus act in a way that overturns their prejudice. That's a nice interpretation, but I think at best we would call that a stretch, wouldn't we? There is a conflict for Jesus here. Earlier in Matthew, Jesus sent the disciples out to announce the good news. And he told them, go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather 
to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus has a clear sense of his mission. He's going first to Israel. And after all is complete, then the good news is to go to the ends of the earth. But there has to be order here. And he sees it to be God's order that he is following. The Canaanite woman's request does not fit uh, God's plan here. And it doesn't fit for Jesus. It's quite a story. In the past few decades, uh, scholars have come to an interesting place in interpreting this text. Take note what happens. The Canaanite woman makes a request. Jesus rather harshly rejects it. And the woman accepts his judgment, but with a twist. Jesus places her after the people of Israel. And she, in her sort of cheeky way, agrees with him. And then asks again and suggests that she knows enough to know that the generosity of God is such that even crumbs from the table would be enough for her. And in this demonstration of faith, she causes Jesus to respond by commending her for her great faith and healing her daughter. It is quite a story. What scholars like to say is that she taught Jesus something here. She taught him about the breadth and depth of God's love and how the gifts of God are given, not just to lost sheep of the house of Israel, but to all and to you and me as well, huh? Now, I have to admit that when I first heard this interpretation, I did not like it. Uh, for quite some time, for actually for decades, I would hear it and hear it and hear it. And I was fairly sure it kind of annoyed me. Why? I... Uh, probably in part because of some sexism in in me, right? Some kinds of stuff going on for how I listen and hear the word. But maybe also there was a misplaced sense of about Jesus. Since he is God's Messiah, I didn't like the idea of some marginal character in the story teaching him. A lesson. And so for quite a few years from first engaging this idea, I kind of set it aside. But here's some fun things to kind of consider. If Jesus is God incarnate, that is, he is fully human and fully God, wouldn't he have to learn things? Would Jesus really have gone through the true human experience if he knew everything? Isn't not knowing part of being human? Isn't learning from others? Isn't growth and change and adjusting also part of being human? I think so. And so this Exchange takes on an interesting uh, life and has some interesting lessons for us. That Jesus has, uh, that, that in Jesus God has fully entered our existence, our life, fully engaged with us and engaging with the Canaanite woman, with this mother in need. Jesus learns and grows and changes. It's interesting that this story is given to us by Matthew, this story that might make us a little uncomfortable. A few years ago, uh, in the podcast that our uh, that Luther Seminary, our seminary in St. Paul, uh, has, the professors were talking a bit back and forth, and, and I can't remember which one. One of them said 
that he would not assume that the Canaanite woman would know the scriptures, know our reading today from Isaiah. We, she probably did not know that Isaiah proclaimed that God's house would be a place for all nations, that he proclaimed of the foreigners who praise God, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. She probably did not know that. Or we could at least ask, did she know that? Did she know the words of the psalmists who sang, May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. All, let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Had she somewhere heard that wonderful song? Probably not. But it crosses my mind. Jesus knew. Jesus knew the words and promises God gave through Isaiah. Jesus knew the song of the Psalms. His mother taught him. She told him the stories. She sang him the songs. He knew well the Ten Commandments and the promises of God. His Religious community taught him well the words of the prophets. Jesus knew the words of Scripture. And as this woman contended with him, as Jesus stated his understanding of the limits of his mission to the people of Israel, she reminded him that God's mission of love for Israel is a feast so grand that a woman like her could thrive from just the crumbs that fell off the table. And Jesus knew she was right. And whatever else is going on, whether Jesus is testing or Jesus is jesting, Jesus learns. Jesus invites her to forget about crumbs praises her for her great faith and invites her to pull up a seat at the table, join a feast and celebrate the healing of her daughter and the love of God for all the world, for you, for me, and the invitation that all of us might share God's bread, might share God's love, God's life, and God's hope. Thanks be to God that you and I can learn afresh and anew that God's grace, God's love has no limits at all. Thanks be to God. Amen.